Allen's Tesla Model S Plaid rolled over after hitting a patch of ice on a winding mountain road, leaving him stranded alone for hours. Let's back up and start this story from the beginning. Allen was headed to his cabin in the Sequoia National Forest one evening. The forecasted low temperature was above freezing and Allen still had summer tires on his Model S Plaid. He told us his Tesla never warned him about freezing conditions, but while he was coming around a bend, he hit a patch of ice and was sent sliding into the side of the mountain. The Tesla rolled onto its roof before riding itself. Less than 10 minutes later, it completely shut down, so even the heater was no longer running. It quickly became very cold and there was no cell reception for miles in any direction. The wreck happened in a very remote area and it was unlikely anyone would drive by, certainly not before daybreak. Thankfully, Alan was able to call for help on his satellite phone. It took a couple of hours for first responders to arrive. Thankfully, Alan only had minor cuts from glass and knives flying around and hitting his head. Where did the knives come from? Alan had been taking some dishes up to his cabin and they were in boxes in his back seat. The impact sent them flying forward before they rolled around the car while it was rolling over. The responding highway patrol officer told Alan he was fortunate to hit the mountainside. If the ice patch had been on the prior curve, the car would have flown off the road and splashed down in the freezing cold Kern River below. The officer also told him that had happened the previous winter and sadly, the family in that car didn't survive. The next day, Alan drove back to the scene of the wreck and found his car's air compressor that had been ripped off. He kept it as a souvenir and to remind him to be more careful while driving on mountain roads. The car was totaled after the repair bill exceeded 100,000 US dollars. While Alan doesn't know if having all season tires would have made a difference in this case, he made sure to get a set for his replacement vehicle, which is also a Model S Plaid. Good call, Alan. We've got more incredible Tesla stories lined up, so hold on to your handlebars. Pata had just picked up the Tesla Model 3 he bought at a salvage auction. He repaired the car enough to drive it and was tinkering around in the interior when he discovered it still had a USB drive in it. He went ahead and plugged it into his computer and found this video of a FedEx truck speeding through an intersection before slamming into the Tesla. It looks like the FedEx truck might have been unoccupied. Pata paid 12,000 US dollars for the car and shipping it to Georgia cost him another 3,000, which includes the auction fees. He's budgeted $4,000 to fix it, which means he'll end up paying $19,000 for a rebuilt Model 3. Speaking of repairing Teslas, one of the most common types of damage we hear about can be any driver's worst nightmare, curb rash. That's why we're so excited that this week's video is sponsored by an awesome solution to this problem. The company Magback is best known for smartphone cases and wireless phone chargers for Teslas, and they have a new product called Rimcase. Their slogan is no more curb rash anxiety. We like it already. The rim case has a modular interlocking design, making it so easy to install, even Wham Bam can do it. We'll give ease of installation a 10 out of 10, and it's just as easy to remove it or replace any damaged pieces. It blends seamlessly with your wheel for a sleek, undetectable appearance, and it'll even hide existing damage. It's true, Wham Bam has curbed his wheels. He claims it was his wife who did this, but we all know the truth. We literally can't imagine a more appropriate product to sponsor Wham Bam Tesla Cam, a product that protects Teslas from damage. Could this collab be any more perfect? The rim case is available for either the induction or Uber turbine wheels on both the Model Y and the Model 3. When you check it out at the link in the description, use our coupon code to get 15% off. Thanks to Magback for sponsoring the video. We now return to our regularly scheduled crashes and carnage. Mateo was driving southbound in El Paso, Texas when a Hyundai Elantra driver ran a red light and he was unable to avoid T-boning it. An ambulance driver witnessed and reported the collision. Police and firefighters responded to the scene within five minutes. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Mateo never did speak with the other driver, but he found out through the police that she was uninsured and her vehicle's registration was expired. 
As a result, the Hyundai was impounded by the police. The police also told Mateo the other driver claimed he was speeding and had run a red light. Too bad for her, Mateo had Tesla cam footage and the ambulance driver's statement to confirm that he'd done nothing wrong. The video evidence made the police investigation open and shut. Mateo's repair estimate currently stands at 2,500 US dollars, but we expect it to increase after a thorough inspection. There seem to be a lot of uninsured drivers these days, so it's a good idea to have uninsured motorist coverage on your own insurance policy. Mark was driving his Model S in North Canton, Ohio, and navigating one of many roundabouts in the area when the driver of a Toyota Avalon failed to understand how they operate. The Toyota crashed right into the side of Mark's Tesla. Mark's wife and oldest son were in the car, and right after the collision, his son leaned forward to tell him that he now had a video to send to Wham Bam. The police were called to the scene, and the other driver was cited for failing to yield. Justin was driving his Model 3 when a vehicle exiting the highway suddenly lost control and crossed all lanes before colliding with the median barrier. Justin kept going, but when he got home, he found a report of the collision on the California Highway Patrol's website. The incident was described as a no-injury hit-and-run collision. Well, that doesn't seem accurate. Did the driver tell the CHP that someone had hit them? If so, maybe the CHP should take another look at that case after watching this video because it doesn't look like that's what happened. What are we looking at, you might wonder? Let me hit the light switch. There we go. This clip is from Dario, who sent us this video of when his house, business office, and warehouse were all flooded. Three cars, including his Model Y, were affected by the flooding. About 4,300 square feet were under water and mud up to waist level. Incredibly, Sentry Mode was able to keep running the entire time. Dario is now facing a very long insurance process ahead. We hope it all works out in the end. Alexander was driving down a highway in France when traffic suddenly came to a stop. He managed to stop in time, but a car behind him didn't, which set off a chain reaction of cars smashing into each other. Alexander already had his foot on the brake, which prevented him from continuing the carnage and crashing into the Mercedes in front of him. The involved drivers pulled over and calmly exchanged information without anyone feeling the need to involve the police. How very European of them! That isn't really how we Americans tend to deal with these things. You'll see what I mean in this next story from the Wild West, I mean California. But first, repairing Alexander's Tesla took a week and cost around 5,000 US dollars. Cora had just paid off his one-year-old Model 3. No, literally, he just left home after making the final payment. It was now his Tesla free and clear, but sadly, it wasn't free of trouble. Just as his light turned green and he was about to enter a highway on-ramp, an SUV appeared behind him, one he'd had no previous interactions with, as the video footage proves. The SUV driver sped up, turned left from the straight-only lane, and tried to squeeze past Cora on the on-ramp. Even though the SUV driver had sped up, he hadn't fully passed Cora, so he slowed down to make room for the reckless SUV driver. Once the driver had merged in front of Cora, they slammed on their brakes, screeching nearly to a halt. Cora tried to avoid a collision, but he'd been caught off guard and couldn't avoid rear-ending the SUV. The SUV driver then sped off, crossing several lanes of traffic without signaling. Cora pulled over to the shoulder and called the police. Cora offered to show the officer his Tesla cam footage, and when he watched it, he reacted by asking, What the heck? Okay? The SUV driver was easily identified using his license plate number, but get this. He denied any fault, claiming that a BMW had braked hard in front of him and that Cora was at fault because he hadn't been maintaining a safe distance. As a result, the SUV driver's insurance provider asked Cora to pay for repairs to the SUV. He responded by sending them his Tesla cam footage, and that cleared everything up right away. Repairing his Tesla took a week and cost 16,000 US dollars at the local Tesla certified collision center. Has anybody else noticed that Tesla repair time seemed to be going down? Zach was driving with autopilot engaged when, all of a sudden, he heard a loud crunch outside and saw a minivan next to him run over what looked to be a rogue spare tire lying in the road. Shortly after, there was a line of cars pulled over on the shoulder, all of them with their hazard lights on. They must have all run over the same thing as a few of the drivers were getting ready to put on their own spare tires. Thankfully, the minivan seemed to be unaffected as they kept on going. 
This emitter was charging his Tesla Model Y at his workplace. The charger is clearly labeled as private and only for Teslas, but the driver of a Rivian must have missed those signs. Sadly, that wasn't the only thing the Rivian driver missed. When he opened his door, the wind caught it and it dinged the side of our submitter's Tesla. After trying to use the Tesla charger with an adapter for a few minutes, the Rivian driver pretended nothing had happened by moving to the other side of the Tesla and using a different charger instead. This emitter told us the ding is noticeable, but thankfully the paint wasn't damaged. Since the damage was so minimal, he chose not to confront the Rivian driver. While Michael was traveling down Sibley Boulevard, a Mercury sedan passed him on the left before a Buick SUV suddenly emerged from a side street on the right. The Mercury driver swerved into oncoming traffic to avoid being hit by the Buick, instead colliding head-on with a Nissan Murano and ripping off the passenger wheel. Michael immediately made a U-turn to follow the Buick as he knew the other drivers would need its license plate number since the Buick driver had caused the collision. Michael successfully retrieved the plate number and returned to the scene to share it and his Tesla cam video with the drivers. The driver of the Mercury was an off-duty cop and the driver of the Murano was a 21-year-old whose mother was riding with her. They were both thankful that Michael had chased down the fleeing driver and for copies of his Tesla cam footage. In a situation like this, who would you blame? Is it the Mercury driver's fault for not stopping in time or is it the Buick driver's fault for not yielding to traffic? Ginger had left her Tesla parked in Sunnyvale, California. Only five minutes later, a vandal decided to break the Tesla's window with a punch. He waited until he thought the coast was clear, but the attack triggered the alarm and sentry mode recorded the act. Ginger made a police report and included her sentry mode footage. The cops told her they'd be investigating as this was technically a felony. They encouraged her to share the footage on social media to see if anyone could identify the criminal. Naturally, people online wondered if she had provoked this man in any way. She checked all her recordings to see if she had cut someone off or if anybody had followed her to the parking lot, but she found nothing. The vandal was wearing very nondescript clothing and was well prepared to commit this crime, so it really does seem to be a random act of senseless violence. Replacing the window will cost over 2,000 US dollars, of which Ginger will have to pay her insurance deductible of $250. It'll take two weeks to get the windshield, but since the crack is on the passenger side and not obstructing her view, she can still drive the car in the meantime. If you recognize this man, please contact us and we'll forward the information to Ginger and to the police. CJ was driving home from work when he merged to the left lane to avoid congestion. Soon after, traffic in the right lane stopped while the left lane continued to flow. A driver in the right lane had left a gap for a crossing vehicle, but that driver couldn't see traffic in the left lane and decided to go for it. CJ swerved but couldn't completely avoid a collision since there was another vehicle waiting to cross in the median. Both drivers immediately pulled over. Temperatures were extremely high with the heat index at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The other driver had been working outside in the heat all day and CJ observed he was fatigued even as he admitted fault. CJ told us he always keeps snacks in his work backpack so they both sat in his air-conditioned Tesla and each had a granola bar while they waited for the police. CJ showed the other driver his Tesla cam video in the meantime and he was amazed. The police deemed the other driver at fault without needing to review the footage. Fixing CJ's Tesla took three weeks and 14,000 US dollars, and he also received a settlement check for $2,500 for diminished value. CJ wanted to shout out his daughter Isabella, who loves watching Wham Bam videos with him. And he told us his wife is pretty cool too. Sterling was driving home from work when a red truck hit something in the road, sending it into the front end of a car that was tailgating it and sending parts flying. That seems like poetic justice to me. The car that was hit began smoking and eventually had to pull off the highway. Even though the car was visibly damaged before this incident, it was clearly much more damaged after. In fact, it looks like the radiator was destroyed. Michael was driving behind an Audi down a highway in Seattle, Washington. 
The exit lane headed to the airport was packed, and it was obvious that some drivers were trying to cut the line. That's exactly what happened when a Mercedes driver in front of the Audi slowed down and tried to merge into the packed exit lane. This frustrated the Audi driver who tried to pull around the Mercedes. At that exact moment, a taxi abruptly changed lanes and crashed into the Audi as it swerved around the Mercedes. And then, the Audi accelerated and rear-ended the Mercedes as well. I'm not really sure what was going on here, but Michael told us there was a semi-truck stuck in the airport terminal which had caused the backup. Wham! Bam! We got a Patreon man! Please support the show!